All right, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, um, so we are going to be speaking on these. Um, I'm going to start with introduction, but before I introduce myself, let me go back to my co-speaker. So for this session, I'm supposed to which is here with me, but because of um, some visa travel issues, uh, Uchi is not able to join me. So I would like to introduce Uchi first. So Uchi is the founder of Chi Money. Uchi is a developer and open source advocate. Uchi has worked with these listed organizations before. And of course, Uchi is a foodie. And from uh, Uchi's picture, you can see Uchi is big on um, culture. OK, so back to my introduction. I'm Omotala Yuniz Omotayo. I'm a community manager, open source, and DEI advocate. And I'm in Nigeria. I came all the way from Nigeria. <laughs> OK. Um, so I would like to start with this um, to state this. Um, to explain the state of open source for contributors. Um, we all know that now, currently or recently from years past, we've seen that open source is now largely used by organizations, individuals, governments, corporations, and so on and so forth. Um, they are now adopting the use of open source. So let's um, review some key developments in open source. I just mentioned the adoption. Um, we have other speakers have talked about organizations that are using open source right now. And that uh, also leads to increased growth um, in terms of the fact that we have more open source projects now more persons contributing to open source because open source um, allow persons from diverse um, background, irrespective if you are from, uh, let's say you have tech background or you don't have tech background, you can contribute to open source. So everybody's coming with different ideas to work on solution, provide solution for this organization using uh, open source. So um, that also leads to more participation, government is using it, uh, then also more focus on security. All right, so because I mentioned earlier that this section is going to be focused on contributors, right? Um, let's look at some benefits that contributors, we all know that contributors are gaining from open source, right? Um, accessibility and contribution. I mentioned earlier that open source is um, welcoming to everyone, irrespective of their background. They are welcome to contribute, be part of, um, improve open source projects, and so on. That also leads to their skills development. So um, open source allow you to come in with that knowledge that you have. You work with other persons to provide a solution, right? And while contributing, you learn one or two things as well. So that's where um, skills development and career advancement, because you can come from a non-technical non background, start probably increasing, uh, improving documentation. And before you know, you can um, even change your, um, you can learn more about programming language while documenting, right? And from there, your career will advance from maybe zero to 10, 50, and so on and so forth. OK. Um, let, me, let me go back a bit. So this section, we, uh, uh, we, I wanted to also understand that there are methods for, um, for paying or appreciating open source projects, right? But if you agree with me, these uh, benefits or approaches for paying open source contributors are always on the bigger side of things. Like um, we have one speaker mentioned the other time that their um, organization appreciates the open source software that they're using. But trust me, there is one open source software maybe on the lower level that is not being appreciated. Be it might be because they don't have a big community backing them up or because they are not popularly known. We'll get there. So um, I'm just going to highlight um, some methods or approaches that open source contributors are being paid with. Um, we obviously know GitHub sponsors. Uh, they've supported a lot of open source projects, um, donations and grants. For open source projects that has um, big, uh, build, uh, big communities backing them up, or let's say that are well known because they have a big name, right? They can easily apply for grants and they will easily get it, yeah? Because they are well known open source um, 
um, software. We also have fellowship program. Fellowship programs like um, Ask Richie, uh, I work with Ask Richie as their community manager, and they provide this paid internship opportunity for persons to contribute to open source. They actually pay 7,000 USD, which is a very good way um, for open source contributors to be paid. We also have um, Google Season of Dog, Google Summer of Code, and a lot of other fellowship out there that pay contributors for their contributions. Um, we also have Buy Me A Coffee. For some contributors, um, if you want to use their software, you will see me probably a link for you to appreciate them for using their um, software. A lot of persons use this software, and you will see they buy me a coffee and be like, oh, I'll buy you a coffee, I'll come back. That's after using the software. But trust me, most, of, most persons don't come back to appreciate the contributor. Uh, so these are some of the ways that are already in place to appreciate open source contributors. Now let's look at um, the challenges that we have with this current approach. So I'm going to use this model. As you can see, um, for this model we have a small software, open source software, right, that someone has been dedicating his or, or their time to, to contribute to it. And from the up there, we have um, other projects on the up layer, right? If a particular um, company wants to appreciate this project, it is really hard because they're going to see the first um, two layers, the bigger um, softwares, and it's really difficult to see this last or very uh, hidden project. So if, um, let's say, a donation is to be made to this particular software using that illustration, it might not even get to this particular person. And we all know open source contributors. A lot of persons, because of the intentionality, because they want to build their career or they want to belong to a good cause, uh, people are contributing to open source even more than their nine to five. Do you agree with me? <laughs> yes, I've seen a lot of peers that will say they just love this solution. People gather together because they want to provide a solution, right? And through open source contribution, yes, they might want to understand that, no, I want to contribute to open source because I want to um, get money probably because, um, probably through the paid um, fellowship that I mentioned earlier, or probably because I want to improve my skills, I want to improve my career, right? But a lot of persons now get to dedicate more of their time to this solution they are providing. A lot of persons now find this perfect interest in contributing to open source, more developed interest in contributing to open source, but they are not um, paid for it. So it's, um, these, the former approaches that I mentioned earlier seems not sustainable enough, especially for projects like this. Then location barrier. Um, let's take a look at the... Uh, donation or grants that are available for some softwares. A lot, uh, most of um, open source community or say projects um, could not access these grants that are available because let's use Africa for example. Some projects grants might say, oh, this is only available for Americans. Yes, I I'm just using that for example. And because of their location, they will not benefit from that. Uh, um, approach. And um, this is a very big problem because it's not f um, this approach or other approaches uh, because of this location barrier, um, contributors are not able to benefit from it. Not choice based. I, I really like this example because, um, say, an organization or an individual wants to give back to a contributor and say, okay, I'm going to provide you with Bitcoin. I might not be able to spend Bitcoin in my country, and I've participated, I've contributed a lot to that project. But because I can't spend Bitcoin, um, compared to someone in Dubai that can easily walk to any store and you know pay for goods with Bitcoin. So at that point, it is not choice-based. Yes, that is what you have to, con to, to appreciate me for my contribution, but I can't use it, and at that point, it is not valuable to me. Now, let's talk about opportunities for improvement. Number one is open collective. A lot of um, some open source um, communities, I'm going to use um, the open source um, Africa community. That's OSCAR, Open Source Africa community. is actually the largest open source community in Africa. 
Um, they are focused on empowering people to contribute into open source. And the funniest thing is this community have, um, over the years, been able to dive in a lot of persons with zero knowledge in contributing to open source to now making good impact in open source contribution. So last year, they were able to use Open Collective um, to get donation various donations from anywhere, there's no location barrier, and it's transparent way of um, getting donation and all that benefits. Another example is the Interledger and web monetization. So um, Interledger allow you to use your API, add um, web monetization to your projects. So without having um, your users having to go through maybe a third party, maybe sign up for something, maybe fill a form, you'll get paid for people just visiting or using your projects, which is quite easier on your side as a contributor and on your user's side. And the third um, method that I'm going to be highlighting more is um, the Chi Money. So Chi Money is a global payment method, just like the image you can see here. And going back to the challenge, the challenges of the approaches I've mentioned earlier, the location-wise, not um, choice based and also not sustainable. Uh, Chi money stand in gap in this aspect because um, you can send benefits, you can send gifts, you can send anything to anybody nationwide without any barrier. So I'm going to use um, this case for to, as my case study. So last year, Chimoni contributed in the um, popularly known um, Oktoberfest. And we use um, these two products, ChiPay and ChiConnect. So we make these projects available for contributors, for persons with zero knowledge, any aspects of career paths that they're coming from, um, be it de um, documentation, programming, design, to contribute to these projects, these two projects. And what were the benefits that this contributor got from this um, participation? We have a community set aside where these contributors can come in to work in teams with other persons working on that solution. So in this community, I can come in and say, I'm just learning how to design, but I want to do this. You see other designers in there that are going to collaborate with you and say, oh, this is the tool I use for my design. Why not let's jump on the call? People are intentionally ready to help each other to contribute contributes. So we have this community behind uh, this um, participation in the October 1st, which um, is really a big one. So they were there to support each other. And um, after, um, towards the end of the contribution, and even after the contribution, for the top contributors, we had a one-on-one, -on -one, Uchi has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them to learn more about their technique, their journey in um, open source, how, where, where they started from, where they are right now, where they see themselves in the next, say, two years, three years, and five years, how Chimoni can actually be of up to them. So we were really intentional about their growth. We didn't ask them to only come and develop our projects, but also want to learn more about how we can work with them, or even if it is um, to advise them on these are the steps you can take, these are the things you can do, which is actually a very good encouragement to contributors. We also provided swags um, to top contributors. So if you ask me now, um, I mentioned earlier that location barrier. So Chimoni stand in gap with that because you, we can send you a gift. I'm going to explain that um, in details later. We can send you, say, we provided um, Chimoni credits. You can, this G money credits can be redeemed in your local bank, regardless of what, wherever you are, your location. You can redeem this G money credits in your local bank. You can use it to shop on your favorite um, marketplace. And uh, you can also change it to your Bitcoin wallet. So you can decide what value you want to get out of the gifts we are giving you. So it's for everyone, regardless of their location and whatever they want to use it for. So these gifts, these incentives that we provided for them um, was really encouraging because for every merge PRs, you get a gift and you can redeem it in any form that you want. How are we... Um, so we were able to use ChiPay to send these gifts, which is quite easier on our side because I was expecting, I'll, I'll be expecting question like, so you have a lot of contributors. How were you able to like get their details without imprev, imp, um, invading in their privacy? Not saying send me your account details or whatsoever. So all we need to send them their gifts is just their email address or say their um, Twitter handle. 
And with just this, we were able to send at once more than 10,000 at once, make that action, send more than 10,000 gifts to everyone regardless of their location. So that was made possible um, by the product. And, um, oh, did I talk too fast? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So let, let me summarize this. It's actually a long conversation, and I'll open it for more discussion. But what I'm trying to say in summary is that there is, there is a lot of engagement. There is a lot of collaboration in improving open source um, software. And the good thing is open source software now is more recognized. A lot of organizations, individuals, governments, corporations, and so on, they are now making use of open source. We are relying on open source because one way or the other is kind of um, reducing the cost that they spend on their products, right, on their projects. And um, they, because of innovation, yes, everybody's using open source now. They want to be part of it. Um, so open source should be because um, it, some organization will come and say, yes, we provide support. We give back to um, people contributing or people who develop the, pro um, the software we are using. But there are still some contributors down there that probably do not have this big backup um, community to back them up, or probably a big name to put out there that, oh, this is the group of community working on this project. They are dedicating a lot of time to this project, but they are not getting um, um, any benefits. So in supporting open source, there is need for um, support for all projects and contributors, and in order to also drive sustainability. So uh, just like I mentioned, this um, discussion is open. I want to hear from you. I want to learn from your view, maybe your project, how your project is supporting contributors from your own space, or the approaches you can think of from my explanation so far. Maybe you have one or two approaches you want to share with me with the other audience out there as well, or you want to like share your ideas with me. So that is also open for um, discussion. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. You can connect with me on these social media platforms and uh, questions. All right, do we have any questions for Omatola? Uh, hi, so hi. Uh, you mentioned fellowships. Do, do you have any experience with any particular fellowship programs? Okay, uh, I mentioned earlier that I work with Outreach. Outreach is a paid remote internship opportunity. Um, Outreach pays 7,000 USD for their interns, and um, they welcome persons who are underrepresented in the country they are living in, especially in tech. Maybe you are not opportune to study computer science or whatever. Um, the so-called, you should have a technical knowledge. So actually, welcome underrepresented population to their pro um, program. The program happens twice a year. And yeah, I'm very familiar with it because I'm one of the organizers as well. And it's an, it's an international fellowship open to everyone from around the world. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. And another good thing about the fellowship I mentioned earlier is we don't just um, welcome interns, people to contribute. We also welcome people who have um, good knowledge about open source contribution, people who have um, communities who have projects that they want to develop to participate in the program as well as mentoring organization to mentor these interns that are coming in and also that in turn um, help them to develop their projects even more faster. Um, with the internship or fellowship program, aside from the cash uh, benefit how else do you find those people need to be supported? Uh, can you repeat your question? Uh, how, how else do you support the fellows, like with equipment or with like internet connection or? For the fellowship program? Yeah. Um, so I mentioned that the um, fellowship program is paid, 7,000 USD, and um, we don't provide, um, say, other resources, but we provide one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunity. 
So you have your mentor who is dedicated. I think we have a mentor in the house. <laughs> okay, so we have um, a mentor. Who, yes, another mentor. We have mentors who are dedicated. We have community, open source community, who are dedicated to help you to grow through this process. Okay, so, so the question from the mentor, because I, I was twice the mentor of LGG, <laughs> actually. So I, mean, I, know, I, I know the organization and, and personally. Uh, so uh, what's the... How do you see the role of mentors in the future for uh, for the, this kind of fellowships and this kind of like bringing more people into the open source community? I think this is something that we've been discussing, uh, and I, I think I would love to hear your perspective on that and the others. Okay, so I'm going to explain the roles of these mentors and how it also um, serves as a benefit um, to contributors. So. Um, I would say without mentors, there is no, this fellowship will, will not be as strong as we put it, and there won't be proper way to support um, contributors' interns or uh, fellowship. So the, 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 the mentors serve as a um, great um, resource for the program, and uh, as well, the mentors have to dedicate their time to ensuring they provide the right resources, learning tools, take um, the participant through the process and ensure, and in terms, um, the, the mentors projects will also be worked on by the interns, uh, making it easier for them to, you know, scale their projects. And um, let me now talk, let me divert back to the benefits to the contributors. A lot of persons come to open source to contribute their small or in whatever level their knowledge to that particular open source project, right? But because they have mentors who can explain to them this is what, like what we did with the October first. we have a community, we have people who are experts in that field, right? So the mentors serve as a very um, great resource for them to actually scale from the level where they are when they came into contributing to op the open source to, where, to the next level. Yes, please. Uh, how do you attract uh, contributors for your fellowship programs? Is there any basic minimum criteria, or you can just follow whoever interests in yeah. into the fellowship program that you mentioned? Okay. So, so, so for the fellowship, the fellowship is open to everyone, regardless of your skills level. Um, the projects that we have for the fellowship, for the mentoring community, have um, so the, the mentors will state the requirement uh, because we welcome first time contributors to this project, right? So you can state for your project as a mentor, you can state that this project level is one. We have one to five. Um, one can mean you don't need to have, you learn on it. Two it can be this is, uh, it is, it is important to have, but if you don't have it, you are still welcome. Three can be this is required. Four can be you need to have in-depth knowledge on, about this tool. Then five can be you should be experienced with the tools and every other. So the space is welcoming for everyone. Like regardless of the levels you have, you always find something to work on. Yes, you're welcome. Any other question? Um, just like I mentioned, this topic, um, this session is open for conversation. I'll be so much around. You can meet with me to share your ideas as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.